you want to let me know when I should go ahead and get started? Sure, you... I guess we'll start now. We have about 10 people and I think that's a good number. Okay, perfect. So I'll just do a short introduction. Welcome everybody. Thank you for signing up and coming to this program today. Uh, we have a great program with Miss Danielle Butler and uh, just some things about Zoom before we start, since this is a webinar meeting, we can't hear or see you. So anything you wanna say, you could just put into the chat box or raise your hand and me or Danielle will be able to unmute you so that you can speak to us. Uh, with that being said, Danielle, you can take it away. Thanks so much. We've had um, a good run here of uh, online classes. Um, and I hope that everybody can hear me okay. Uh, with the dual screens, I try to have one focused on my workspace here, and then I have a camera that I can speak to. So I hope that everybody can hear okay. Um, your kits for tonight to make the Halloween chocolate smash bombs came with a couple of things. The first and most important is the mold. This will allow you to make the chocolate spheres that we are going to fill with candy. These are also um, the same kinds of molds that you could use to make hot chocolate bombs, um, which became very popular last year. There was a TikTok video, I think, uh, and it went viral. And uh, everyone everywhere was making hot chocolate bombs. So these candy smash bombs are a different take on that idea. It's all edible, it's all chocolate. You can fill it with whatever you'd like. You can personalize it for the seasons. These we made Halloween and I included in your kits some Halloween colored M&Ms and some Hershey Kisses um, that you can you know, definitely mix and match. These um, molds are about 50 millimeters. Um, so if you measure them, that's what they would measure uh, in diameter. They come in all different sizes. You could get them in 50 and 60 and 70. They have you know, large ones that you would use for, um, if you wanted to make a family size, hot chocolate ball or candy ball uh, would take a lot more chocolate. Um, each of these molds is going to be filled with about a tablespoon and a half of melted chocolate. Um, so you also received in your kit some milk chocolate wafers. The chocolate that you got in your kits was Merkin's chocolate, which is a great chocolate brand. Um, if you haven't tasted it, you should go ahead and take a bite. Uh, it's great flavor. Um, it melts really nicely. I have some that I melted down already that I can show you. It's a beautiful consistency when it's melted. And there are lots of options when you are dealing with chocolate. You can get almond bark, which is not actually contain almonds, or, nor is it bark. Uh, and it's not really even chocolate. It's a coating, candy coating. Um, you can get melting wafers like the Merkins or uh, Sweet Shop or uh, Hobby Lobby has a brand um, that comes in a green bag. There, Wilton has candy wafers um, or you could do real chocolate. Um, Calibut is the most common real chocolate brand. Um, but if you are going to use real chocolate, there's a whole nother level of complexity because real chocolate needs to be tempered, which means alternately heating and cooling to the right temperature so that the crystal structure will break and rebuild so that your chocolate will be stable when you melt it and then you try to firm it up. So I tend to only use the melting wafers. Um, I will mix them with almond bark just for flavor. I like the way that it tastes together, but this is a little bit of where your experimentation and what you wanna do uh, will play into effect. Last season, it was really hard to get supplies. I used some Ghirardelli melting wafers. Um, I used almond bark. I did end up eventually finding the Merkins um, and I ordered them in, in bulk. So I, I ordered these by the 50 pound box, but I make a lot of chocolate bombs, both candy and hot chocolate. Um, I'm gonna take a step back for just a second and just introduce myself a little bit more fully. My name is Danielle Butler and I run an online bakery called The Bite Size Bake Shop. If you haven't taken a class with us before, you can find us um, on the web at www.thebitesizebakeshop.com or on Facebook at The Bite Size Bake Shop or on Instagram at the underscore Bite Size Bake Shop. We are an online bakery that customizes uh, gourmet custom 
bite size and standard size treats. So we make everything from cupcakes and cookies to full size cakes, full of hard cakes, pretty much anything that uh, you can imagine. Um, we got into the hot chocolate bomb and chocolate smash bomb world last year. And it, it was kind of a whirlwind for us. Uh, we, I ended up with about 10 flavors of hot chocolate bombs. And then I've done a variety of different candy smash um, options. We did some uh, St. Patrick's themed ones. We did some Valentine ones. We did some Easter eggs and uh, I made some large, um, put my hands here, large sized hearts. They were about uh, eight inches across that were filled with candy and treats. Um, it really, really runs the gamut and the only limit is your imagination. So this is the basics that will take you through the melting and the coating of the molds, but there are lots of options out there. So I would say if you're interested in learning more, just watch some YouTube videos and just start practicing. Your family would like to eat your mistakes. Um, my family always does. Uh, and I'm sure they'll appreciate the fact that you're giving them all of these delicious treats to, um, to try out. So in your kit, you had the mold, you had your chocolate, for melting and you had your M&Ms. Those are what we're gonna fill your um, candy bombs with. You will also need a microwave safe dish. Um, I like this stoneware one because once I heat it up in my microwave, it retains the heat really nicely. So my chocolate will stay at a good temperature for a little while. I did also set up on my stove over here, I have a cookie sheet with a little bit of uh, parchment on it and I have just set the temperature to low and this is going to show how we melt our shells in a few minutes. You can also do it via a plate in the microwave, and we'll talk about that more in a minute. So the very first step is going to be to take your chocolate and put it in a microwave uh, safe bowl. And we're going to microwave this for 30 seconds. It's really important when you are um, melting chocolate that you not overheat it because overheat chocolate will see it seizes, it means it gets hard and then you have to let it cool and then you can remelt it and it, sometimes it seizes to the point where it burns um, and if you've ever burned chocolate you'll know that that doesn't smell good and it doesn't taste good and you're definitely not going to be able to use it if that happens. So 30 second increments, make sure that you have a spoon that you can mix with and you're going to want to mix it in between each 30 second interval. I find that for this amount of chocolate 30 minutes, 30 second cycle in the microwave is enough to melt it. And I'll show you that it's already starting to melt. I don't know if you can see in the bottom there, we have a little bit of meltage already. So I'm going to pop it, I'm going to little, little, little stir, and I'm going to put it back in the microwave. And then once your, um, your melting starts, the bowl is warm, your chocolate is starting to warm, and it really melts itself. So you can um, let the carryover heat from the bowl focus on melting the chocolate. Now the chocolate that as we put it in the molds, you don't want it to be piping hot. So once it gets melted, you're gonna wanna let it set for a few minutes so that it can cool down a little bit, which it also is good if you don't heat it up too much. Then it can come to the right temperature uh, a little bit more. So my chocolate looks soft, not completely melted yet, but I'm going to give it a good stir. And you can see that there is melted chocolate on the bottom. So we're going to let that melted chocolate is much hotter than the solid. And I'm going to just start stirring that. And I'm going to see how much melt we get. Sometimes it's enough to melt all of the discs. Occasionally, you might need to put it in for another 15 seconds but you can see how quickly that is melting down. The bowl feels warm to the touch and you wanna just keep stirring until all of the chunks of chocolate are dissolved. The more you stir, the better the melt. You don't want any chunks of unmelted chocolate because it'll be hard to work with and then it won't set up right. You're just gonna keep stirring kind of vigorously, but without making a mess until your chocolate is melted. You'll wanna make sure that you're working with fresh chocolate. Um, old chocolate will not melt correctly. 
And you may need to end up adding oil to it in order to get this nice kind of smooth glossy finish. Um, if it seems chunky and it's not melting, definitely go ahead and zap it again for 15 seconds. You shouldn't really need too much more than that. And if it's not melting correctly, the next step would be to add some coconut oil um, or uh, solidified coconut. Um, fractionated coconut oil would work too. Even a spray of nonstick canola, just to give it a little bit more fat. Sometimes the chocolate, as it gets older, it loses its ability to melt nicely. And a little bit extra oil will help you get this beautiful gloss. So if you have new chocolate, it shouldn't be an issue. But if your chocolate is a little bit older, which you know you sometimes don't know what you're going to get in the store, you don't know how long those bags have been sitting on the shelves sometimes. You don't want to use chocolate chips because chocolate chips are not made the same way that melting wafers are, and they don't contain enough fat. So chocolate chips are not going to melt down and give you this beautiful chocolate ribbon. You see how nice and smooth that is? Chocolate chips are not going to give you that this look. You would be better off to get uh, almond bark if you don't want it to use the candy wafers, the melting wafers, um, and do uh, almond bark in lieu of uh, chocolate chips. All right, so once your chocolate is melted, I'm just gonna combine the two bowls that I have so that I'm working from one bowl. You should have enough melted chocolate to make at least your six shells, and you may even get more depending on how much chocolate you put in each shell. The big thing that you'll want to remember when you're working with these, um, these silicone molds is that the edges are gonna be the issue area. So as you're, you're gonna wanna make sure that you coat the um, inside of the mold really well. And then we're gonna let that set in the freezer for a few minutes. And then we're gonna come back and we're gonna do a second um, coat of chocolate on the edges. Because if you don't, you'll see I did this one earlier. This was my one, one of my first ones in this mold. Um, it's got a decently thick shell, you can see, but there was a, a crack when I took it out of the mold. So we could fix it, the piece here. If I wanted to kind of glue it back together, I could take a little bit of chocolate and I can stick it back together and then just let it cool. I'll show you a way afterwards to hide your mistakes. So we fixed the crack just by adding a little bit of melted chocolate to it. But it's gonna be really important that you um, do a double dot of the coat and coat on the edges in order to make sure that they're strong enough to be solidified together. So we're gonna take our silicone mold. I'm just gonna use this one because I already dirtied it. Um, these are all hand washed. I would not put them in the dishwasher. Hand wash with warm soapy water and then dry. And if they seem like they're, your bombs are not coming out um, nice and shiny, you can wipe them with a little bit of vodka. Just wipe the mold out. Um, I did also suggest you have a silicone brush uh, or I have a, pa a pastry paintbrush that I uh, will use. Either will be fine. You can also use the back of your spoon to kind of drag the chocolate up the mold. And you want to just give it a good coating. So you're using about a tablespoon of chocolate and the back of the spoon or a paintbrush. And you just want to make sure that your mold is covered completely. You'll want to, when you have a little bit of chocolate in there, give it a little tap on the counter and that will settle out any air bubbles. And it'll also give you a chance to rotate the container around and make sure that you have all of the sides completely and evenly covered. As this, the chocolate kind of settles into the middle, you'll see it pool. You see a kind of pool in there. And you might notice an air bubble or two. Just give it a little jiggle and then keep filling. So we're gonna fill each of these six holes. I like to do them two at a time. That will gives me time to go in and jiggle the chocolate around. That's the professional terminology, of course. <laughs> 
Um, and then you're gonna go to the second mold. And then I will go back to the first two that I did. And again, just work the chocolate up the side in order to make sure that we're giving the best structure that we can to our, I have a little bit too much chocolate in that one, so I'll move some of it over. Um, with the larger molds, you can use a cookie scoop to portion out your chocolate. Um, with this, I don't have a cookie scoop that is the right size for this amount of chocolate, uh, but you certainly could do that if you had a, a larger mold. So I'm gonna do the last two molds here. And then I'm gonna move these to the freezer in order to set. And then we'll do that second coat of chocolate around the edge. And while these are in the freezer for the first few minutes, we're gonna talk a little bit about the process of what comes next in finishing your smash bombs. So I'm just gonna finish this one. And this looks pretty good. So these are gonna be fairly thick. You definitely will have to you know, use a, a little wooden mallet or a heavy spoon in order to break into them. I will encourage you to when portion where we're ready to um, the right way to do that. So I'm gonna give my silicone mold just a little jiggle and I move it, it to a cookie sheet that fits into my freezer. I have a space cleared in my freezer and I'm just gonna pop these in for a few minutes so that the chocolate can set up. So I did a few already so I could show you that if you are not careful about your chocolate molding, you will end up with weak spots. So this right here, see this, this spot right here, it's almost see-through in my chocolate because I didn't um, ensure that the chocolate on the inside was even. You can see it's a little bit uneven, the coating. You won't see this when you fill it. Um, and this one I assembled, so you can see it's, it doesn't look perfect by any means, but when we set it down in our cupcake holder, I will set it so the seam side is facing up instead of up and down. So I would set it at like a 90 degree angle. Sometimes I'll put a little tiny drop of chocolate in the middle of my cupcake holder just to hold it in place and let that harden. And then when you go to decorate it, the drizzle will hide the seam. So I'll show you how to do the drizzle in a second. So it holds it nice and straight. I'm gonna show you in a minute how to assemble the bombs, um, but it really works best if your seam is clean. So in here, right angle here, here we go. So this edge of my bomb, I took out of the silicone mold and I have this warm pan on, the, on my stove top. I simply set the half sphere on the uh, parchment paper for literally a count of two, like one, 1,000, two, 1,000. And I'm twisting at the same time. I'm gonna show you. So I'm just gonna move the camera that way a little bit. We just go. Us that beautiful clean edge. It took away all of the kind of knobbly pieces. And I don't know if this is going to work because it's a little bit thin, but we should be able to just fit the two halves together. Let me. And then we just line up the edges. And in this shell, I, I have a hole. See that hole right there? So I can take a little bit of melted chocolate and I'm just gonna do a little surgery and I'm just gonna cover that hole right up. And then when I put my, my snack down in the container, I'm gonna like, oh, look at that. I put it right down and you can't even tell that there was a hole. 
So if you are interested in the decorating portion, a little chocolate, a sandwich bag works really well for this. You're gonna take a little sandwich bag, turn it inside out. We're gonna put just a little bit of chocolate right in that bag. And then we're gonna cut a little tiny corner of that off. Close up your bag. Just squeeze out the air, close up that bag. And then I'm just gonna put a little hole in the corner of my bag. And that's gonna give me just a little drizzle spout. I'm going to squeeze and just move the bag back and forth like that. And that's gonna hide all of our little imperfections for our beautiful little bombs. Maybe you put a little M&M on top so that people know that there's candy inside. So that's what it could look like. But my stuff in the freezer should be ready to, for its second coat. So let me let All right. So now these have been in the freezer. You can see they feel cool to the touch, but the sides definitely look thin. So here I'm going to take just my little um, paintbrush and I'm gonna dip it in my melted chocolate and I'm gonna go around the edges and just shore them up a little bit. Since the chocolate is cold, it will solidify almost immediately against the side. And it's just a little extra insurance so that your bombs don't break when you take them out of the mold or when you try to stick the two halves together. So you're gonna work your way all the way around, just adding a little extra chocolate around the edges. You don't want it to go too far down because you should have a bunch of chocolate in the bottom. So they're gonna be already kind of good and thick on that portion. And the nice thing about chocolate is that if you make a mistake or they break, all you have to do is remelt it and do it again. So you can, you know, you can practice over and over again. If you're not happy, just keep melting and solidifying until you get the hang of it. It doesn't have to be perfect right out of the gate, but if you're not happy, you could certainly keep trying, right? So I am by the time I get to this last one at the end over here, my first two are, are almost solidified already because the chocolate is so cold from being in the freezer. I do not put my chocolate in the fridge. Being in the refrigerator creates condensation and it will make your chocolate, it could make it bloom. Um, your chocolate could bloom. That's when it gets like those white spots on it. If it's heated too fast, that's uh, one of the other dangers we would look out for. If you overheat your chocolate and then you subject it to a, a temperature change, you're gonna get that bloom. That's what happens when it's, um, rapidly heats and cools. And if that happens, you can just remelt it again and, um, and then try to solidify again. So I reinforced all of those sides. It's all nicely covered. And the inside doesn't really matter what it looks like, so long as you can't see any of the mold on the bottom. So I'm just giving it a quick glance over. It looks, it looks okay. I'm just gonna get back in the freezer for a minute. This shell, an example of that bloom. So in this is was one of the ones I did earlier. This chocolate got too hot, too heated, and then cooled too quickly. It was overheated. And that smudge line, that white line, that's uh, what the bloom looks like. But if I were going to use, I could use this shell again. I can just remelt it. And it would come back to life and you would never know that there was a problem with it. So while I'm waiting for those to harden, 
Are there any questions? I'll stop here and take questions up to this point. Just remember to raise your hand or throw it in the chat if you have a question that you wanna talk about. There are different um, flavors of chocolate, for sure. You can use um, milk chocolate, which is what we're using here. Dark chocolate and white chocolate also. Good question, good question. Layers, so there's a question, could we do layers of dark and white chocolate? Absolutely. So if you wanted to have like, um, like rings of uh, color, you could definitely put a, you know, a layer of, chocolate in the bottom of your mold, I would let that harden. And then I would do your next kind of swirl. You could swirl colors together. You can use, um, there are some shimmer products. There we go. There's a line of, um, fat dispersible colorants. This one, the brand is Roxy and Rich. So this is what you would add to your white chocolate if you wanted to make it colored or you could add black to milk chocolate to make it black chocolate. This one is a red. Um, it does take a fair bit of color powder to make a, a deep dark color. So if I have a need for a colored shell, I very often will use uh, the candy melts, the Wilton brand or the Hobby Lobby brand. Um, but I found that there are some luster dust. Um, you wanna make sure that any of the sparkly metallics that you use are labeled as edible and non-toxic. Um, so this is 100% edible food grade confectionery shimmer. This is my favorite brand of gold luster. It's from the company is called Bakel. And they, you can find them on Etsy and uh, on the web. It's just gold luster powder. I use this for my royal icing cookies or to um, add a little bit of extra sparkle. But if I wanted to do something really special, I'll show you. We can take a little bit of shimmer and just get a clean brush. You can take a little bit of shimmer on a paintbrush like this, and I'm just going to brush it inside my mold, just kind of around. And you don't really even need too much, but this is going to give such an amazing effect. You'll end up with a gold looking hot chocolate bomb. So this is really fun to do. I have a couple of different colors of this shimmer. Um, were to add then, then our chocolate. Same process, we put the shimmer in, then we add our chocolate and you're gonna brush it up the side. Just doing two like this so you can see. And when it comes out, it's gonna retain that beautiful gold color. So it's nice to do that with a white chocolate base. The colors come through really nicely. Or if you have some darker colored shimmers, you could do it with black or purple to make like a galaxy. And you can do it to varying degrees depending on what color or how dark you want the shimmer. So same idea, we're going to coat the sides. And I just wanna make sure that it's, we give it a good little tap, right? So I'm gonna put these in the freezer just so I can show you what that looks like on the outside. But you can color your chocolate as well. You can do coloring. My bombs are fully, fully hardened now. So before I unmold them, I like to stretch the mold a little bit. You'll see I'm pulling on the edges. I like to pull it side to side and it helps release the chocolate. 
you can see it kind of come away from the side so that you're not just trying to break the chocolate out of the mold. So you wanna make sure that it's all nice and loose. And then I'll take the individual section and I'll push up from the bottom and unmold the shell half. And that's a beautiful, nice round. But you see all this extra on the side here? That's what we'll clean up before we fill them. With these, oh, that one, that one cracked. See, that happens sometimes. We'll just set that one aside. Um, I have found that it's just easier to remake the halves than to try and repair it sometimes. So that one stayed nicely together. This one, and these are, you know, these are fairly thick chocolate. You separate the whole the halves. And we have these beautiful chocolate spheres. So now what, what we can do in order to get ready for the filling part is we could take these empty spheres and we're gonna put them in the Too hot, it'll burn my shell. But you see, it took away all of the edge. And now it's just a perfect, beautiful little sphere. So I'm going to do that with another. Again, put it on my um, parchment paper. It starts to stick and melt away. And it took care of all of that edge. These are going to be easier to seal if they have a clean edge. Then we will set them aside, put in mold. Had a weak spot in it. I don't know if you can see this dimple right here was a result of an imperfection in the mold. So if I were going to use this mold again, I would soak it. And I would let it uh, soak in a little bit of hot water and see if I could work that imperfection out and then just dry it, air dry it um, so that I could, I could not end up with those weak spots. So then I'm gonna put in probably a tablespoon and a half or however many M&Ms you wanna add to your little bombs here. And then we're going to go back to our A little wet, and you're gonna line up the edge just like that. And then you can use your finger to clean up any extra chocolate or a paper towel if you want. And then this, the edges seal so nicely together. And then look at that beautiful little smash bomb that you have. Do that again. The chocolate wet and then align the two sides. Use our fingers to clear off the extra chocolate. So that one didn't seal as well. I'm gonna take it off and I'm gonna try that again. But because I already heated one side, I'm gonna switch the side. And sometimes that happens. You just go back and you remelt it and you try again. And then I see a little hole here. So I'm gonna take my spoon and I'm just gonna do a little bit of surgery right there. And then when I have my, I'll put that spot down. So you would never even know that that, that had a hole in the bottom. So I'm gonna put out a second little bit of chocolate. And it just helps them hold, it, hold them in place. That chocolate will harden. And then we uh, have our chocolate in a little bag over here that we used before for our drizzle. I make sure that it's ready to drizzle and I'm gonna just wiggle it back and forth kind of fast. 
and you can't you can't even see this when you do it like that. So there's our smash bomb number one and smash bomb number two. Put a little candy on it so we know that there's M and M's inside. Pretty. And our It feels hard. So I'm going to just add a little bit more chocolate, same as we did before, just around the edges so that we can prevent some of that breakage. Um, I have heard of, I have not done it, but I've heard of people using a heating pad to keep their chocolate at a nice melting temperature. Um, I'm working right here on my stove top. So the other thing that I'll do is just put the oven on and I'll heat up this, the stove top and it helps keep everything on the warm side. Just be careful that you don't get burns um, if you're working that way. So this looks good. And like I said, it, it comes out of the um, freezer and it's so cold that it's immediately hardening that chocolate. So if I move the mold away from the edges, right? Like we did before and we pop it out. We have this beautiful gold bomb. Kind of incredible. That was just that little bit of uh, luster powder on the inside of our mold. So there's lots of options in terms of, we did a little bit less on that one side, um, but you can see if you were going to There's one. We're going to clean up the bottom. Really creative, um, all kinds of fun things with the decorations on the outside. And I'm just going to steal those two halves together and have a beautiful gold. Christmas ball or holiday ball. So that is beautiful. So if you were going to crack this open, your smash bomb, the kids really like this part, and uh, heavy metals. I have these um, compressors that I got from Pamper Chef years and years ago. This would also be a great breaker. Um, so you could give it a good whack with the wooden mallet, or if you had a, um, a small little um, hammer, you could definitely do that, a wooden or metal spoon, and we give it a good chat, and there you go. You break it right open and there's all your goodies inside. A question about how to seal. I'm sorry, it's hard to hear. Uh, so we're sealing with this. And I put the. Hey, Danielle, I think your audio cut out again on that when you were trying to answer that question. Can you hear me now? Yes, now we can hear you. Okay. So when you, I have this pan on my stovetop, just a regular sheet pan, but I have the, my cooktop is a glass top, so it's flat across the top. So I can set the pan on my cooktop and it will, it will, it will heat up the metal pan. You can also take a, a ceramic plate and put it in the microwave for about two and a half minutes and heat the plate up. Be very careful taking it out because it will be hot. But then similarly, just take a sheet of parchment paper on the warm plate and then uh, the chocolate will melt when it comes in contact with the, the hot ceramic or the metal sheet pan. People will do this also on a candle warmer. If you have a, um, you know, one of those plug-in candle warmers, you plug it into the outlet and you can set that to low. Um, put a piece of tin foil or parchment on top of that as well. Is that a better answer? Is everybody able to hear that?
Any other questions? Yes, we could hear too. Yes. It definitely takes some practice. Um, I think people are surprised with how difficult it is at first, but it's one of those things that, you know, with the chocolate, just remelt it, just melt it and, and try again. And just keep going until you get the hang of it. You'll figure out what style works for you, what size works for you. There's lots of molds available, even on Amazon. Like I said, these were 50 millimeters, but you could very easily get a 60 or 70 millimeter um, mold. Last year, the, the most of the bombs I made were about 70 millimeters. So they were about three inches across. Um, these are a, a much smaller, but if I were gonna make the hot chocolate bombs, I would go with a big, slightly bigger size. All right, any other questions or things that you wanna talk about before we finish up for the evening? All right, well, I don't have anything else just to share with you, but I would love to see your creations. If you um, do end up uh, experimenting, you can always tag us on Instagram at the Bite Size Bake Shop or send us a Facebook post, tag us in your Facebook post, um, send us an email. I know the library always likes to see your, your creations as well. So I can't wait to see what you come up with. And thanks so much for joining me tonight. I appreciate having everybody here.